Alright, I, I should be back now. So, I believe, I believe, it's, it's back there. So you're trying to make a game, and you have a bit of experience with Unity. Well, you know, honestly, I would recommend just using Unity as opposed to Unreal, uh, if it's a smaller project. Unless you have a burning desire to learn C++ or you want to do something super crazy that maybe the engine won't support. Um, in the engine meaning Unity. So uh, the reason that we picked Unreal 4, uh, there's a couple reasons. One of them was we really liked the lighting for it and the, the tool chain. Uh, another reason we picked Unreal 4 is we can actually go ahead and edit the engine if there's something that we want to change. You like the blueprints, and you, so you wouldn't have to code as much. And the other reason we picked it, uh, yeah, one reason was because of the blueprints and we might be able to set stuff up so Adam, who is non-technical, can, um, can work on some features. Um, the other thing is a lot of big studios use Unreal 4 for the more of the project types that we are wanting to work on. So more of the PC stuff, you know, Unity, a lot of a lot of the time you're looking at mobile projects for that. Uh, so another reason was, well, we want to learn Unreal 4 because that's the sort of people we want to be. Is Unreal 4 people. So that's the hard cut. Just bam. Which actually isn't too bad. Like that's, you know, if you're over here, it's just like boom, takes you over there immediately. So that's not it's not too bad. Is this y'all's first project? Um, this is our first project together, but it's definitely not the first project. Like I worked on Dragon Age Legends, some Mass Effect Three stuff, some unannounced. Or and canceled Mass Effect uh, online stuff. Worked on Dawn Gate at EA for a while. Worked at um, on what was Project Blunderbuss at Molten Games for a year, but that fell apart because Koreans stole all the money. Uh, and then I was at Amazon for three years. Uh, worked on some mobile stuff there, The Unmaking, which is a giant pile of crap and doesn't exist anymore because it's giant pile of crap and uh, worked on some other stuff at Amazon that all got cancelled because Amazon doesn't know how to make games alright let's get some mountains here this will be VP mountains and we'll make this viewpoint 4 so I think grasslands is alright yeah viewpoint 5 use transition to be false So, you know, I've got about nine years or so in the industry doing uh, coding. I'm not a gameplay programmer, though. I'm a server engineer, actually. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> like, go to, go to college, go to school to learn how to make games, end up doing server work forever. All right, so that'll be the mountains. Let's see how this looks.
So we'll see. Thank you for following Galactic 3D. So, yeah, I... Unless you have a burning desire, I would, um... The reason to use blueprints in Unreal, you know, being like, well, I don't want to do a whole bunch of code, I'm going to make stuff in blueprints, and that's how I'm going to make my game. It's very difficult to make an only blueprint game. There are limitations on Unreal, and there'll be things where you're just like, I just need this function, I, I need to call this, but it's not public or it's not callable from blueprints and there's no real reason why it's just arbitrary you know like some engineer at epic forgot to to make this thing blueprint callable and so you'll have to do massive workarounds and blueprints for something that in C++ you just get working immediately so I think it's unrealistic to think any project of any real scope could only be made in blueprints so and also blueprints are code like it's you know big Fisher price you know buttons and stuff but if you don't know how to code or you're not interested in coding I this stuff's actually more verbose than just typing out the damn code yourself and can get much more complicated than just some basic code especially for math like for math stuff for instance in our player in our player logic like doing some basic math stuff like just adding some vectors together and multiplying them you end up with kinda just these nasty things going all over the place and it can get pretty gnarly so I think there's arguments on both sides for that. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to make a shipping build and make sure that these performance problems don't exist in a shipping build. So let's go ahead and make a shipping build. Package for that. And it's going to get dumped over. Ah. I need to cancel this. I need to change the startup level. Maps and modes. So, editor startup. We need the game default startup to be the LVUI. All right, if you do know some C++ and you want to do most of the stuff in blueprints, as long as you can, then what I would recommend doing is get, you want to build the editor in Visual Studio. So that's how I've got it, is I've got my project and the editor in Visual Studio. And I would build Visual Studio, you know, grab their GitHub, pull it down and build it yourself. Uh, that way you can make small changes to the code base if necessary. And I would work that way. Uh, God, getting on board with it can be a real pain in the ass. So expect some ramp up time there. It's It's not the easiest thing. I've got a whole bunch of training wheels to help out like I use a batch file here to like build all the stuff outside of Visual Studio and run things that I need to. So I don't know. I wouldn't say it's going to be a walk in the park though. But if you're going to do it, I would recommend going all in on it. And just making it work. Get the C++, build it, and then uh then you can modify things.
I worked on Unity projects before, like Unity is what we made our mobile game at Amazon in, and I had started working on an independent project last year in Unity, and we switched from Unity to Unreal 4. Like we had a we had some serious conversations about that. But I don't know. Both both things, Unity and Unreal 4, have their own issues. And a smaller project, I still would go with Unity. But if you want to know Unreal 4, because you want to know Unreal 4, then do Unreal 4. One thing I would not recommend specifically is don't go use CryEngine, don't go use Lumberyard. I think those engines are both way behind the times and are going to take five years to catch up and who knows if they ever will So is this saying that we have mode declared? Five thirty eight is where we have a mode. Okay, so I'll fix that. This guy will keep building. All right, Galactic, have a good one. Thanks for stopping by, and good luck with your getting started with Unreal. So build and pack this thing. And that is finished.
It looks like our performance problems are pretty much Well, it looks like there still are performance problems. Are they going to go away like they did on the other one? Yeah, it looks like they go away after a little while. Which makes me think it's foliage. Well, that's okay. So I guess the big takeaway there is this level for the UI should probably be pretty small geographically. Uh, so there's not a whole bunch of shit just off camera taking up, you know, LOD caching zones or whatever. Because every time we come back to this map, it needs to, it needs to load pretty fast. And, uh, you know, we unload and reload this map. So I'm going to go back into the editor, and what I should do is take out, you know, I should, I should repaint some of this so as to remove foliage where we don't need it. So that's a huge segment of foliage gone. All right, let's see if that made any difference. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Like we're not we're not even looking over on the left there and Yeah, it looks like the transitions are, they're okay, but they're not amazing. They're kind of meh, and you'd have to really specifically make things so they, they work nicely. And just popping back and forth seems like a better plan. All right, cool. So, what shall we do? We need to actually get this to actually work in the UI.
So in order to do that, I will save things and close the editor. So I think we got everything we need. So what we have to do is define the empty level and the empty level instead of being empty level is now the UI level. And that is inside of our level logic here. So that's going to be our empty level from now on. So I think what I'll do is I'll have in the global the global area what things should have Do we even have some of these things? Because I could go ahead and remove these. Like foreground and background. Like yeah, I might as well just go ahead and nuke some of these files while I'm here.
I guess we don't even have a post-game screen anymore. I guess I can get rid of that. I guess I already did get rid of it. Okay, so these will be all the background points that we have. Alright, set built. I go offline again? Maybe. Looks like it recovered. I think there's some Windows update shenaniganry going on here. Okay, let's just set all these to none to begin with. Okay, so the big ones are going to be game options, host and join, credits. Yeah, I'm definitely going on and off, on, off and online here. And it looks like it's some Windows update stuff. Hooray. Thank you, Windows. Doing God's work. Yeah, there's no interruptions just because stuff is it's going on and off so quickly. But it's definitely be being fucked up. I blame Sunspots. No, I don't. I blame Microsoft. Same thing, though. Alright. So I'll just organize this. So one of the things that we'll want is we'll definitely want... Yeah, it went off again. And again. Good job. Good job, computer. We we'll want like some camera that's facing nothing so that when we actually have a background that we're not doing anything stupid. Okay, so uh, let's organize these a little bit so it makes sense. So we'll have all the multiplayer stuff.
Game options screen. Yeah, that's kind of not one that we care about. Okay, so these are kind of the screens we actually give two shakes about. Uh, I am working on the UI level. That is the level when you pop up the main menu. It'll be the level that is in the background currently. What we got rolling around here is when we boot up our our UI. Is it looks like this, and we've got these nice painted backgrounds, or in some cases these temporary painted backgrounds, uh, which don't really look super amazing, and they're also very difficult to create. It takes a lot of time to actually make those. So instead what we're doing is we're trying to boot this up into what we're calling the UI level. So the main menu would have this sort of stuff as the background, as opposed to uh, something else you know we'd have these are not good examples but I mean this is probably the best example that I've got so far on this thing where you know we'd have actual nice things on the screen you know behind our our stuff so that's the plan that's what we're trying to go for Okay, so let's do some basics. So viewpoint one is main menu. Viewpoint two is all the settings. Uh, viewpoint three is the multiplayer stuff. The splash screen. Actually, let's do viewpoint four for credits and splash screen. I guess we'll just have none because it has a nice painting on there. I'm also having fun times where I'm disconnecting from the internet constantly. Okay, so we have all of our background, I guess I should say G screen viewpoints. And that's what we're going to be going for. So I think we can easily squeeze this into our screens framework. Yeah, it appears smooth, but that's just because things are working. You know, it's going on and off so fast that it's not actually stopping things. Also, how, how a lot of the internet stuff works is it's the difficulty finding the address, which is in establishing the connection, and if the connection's actually already made, or the routing information is known, then even if you go offline, you're still kind of online anyway. So temporary interruptions usually will reset connections. And if you're doing a protocol like a video streaming protocol, connection reset doesn't matter because it's not a it's a connectionless protocol. You're just sending bits across the wire. You already know where they're going and you just keep sending them. Okay, so if this is, what do we have on our screen? We 
We have a name. Okay, good. It's really, uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's just Windows updates. So whenever we switch one of these, we are going to call this window UE viewpoint, activate viewpoint with our viewpoint. Just like that. And it won't matter if, what level we're in, it's just going to do its thing. I mean, we might as well check the level, but I don't think it matters. Is it length? It's just length, all right. So we'll just do it like this. Might as well log it out. Let's make sure we got our, okay, so it worked in Chrome. So let's boot it up in the editor and see if it works. And I don't think we need many viewpoints, like if it's just settings, multiplayer, main menu, credits. You know, that's only four, four viewpoints. All right, so this one is I need a VP none. So let's set it to none. Don't use transition and get rid of all that. And VP none should go. Like, I guess just put it way off in nowhere land. Kind of like that, so it's most definitely out of out of the way. All 
Uh, we have a scripter zero. And that's because things are spelled wrong. Activating viewpoint none. Activating viewpoint viewpoint one. Alright, so we also need to remove some of these screen shields. So, screens, in game screen. No, it's the main menu screen. Screen shield is false. Yes, we have this main menu background, so if we just take that out. It's like our camera is screwed up here on these things. It's um, appearing to have a different aspect ratio than uh, we support. Like it's locking its aspect ratio is what it looks like as opposed to letting it adjust. So if we go to settings. Alright. Let's go ahead and remove the backgrounds on some of these other ones. All right, so multiplayer host. Multiplayer join browse. Multiplayer join IP. Multiplayer join. What are these? Alright, well, we can get rid of that crap. Multiplayer main screen. Online login. I mean, that's not doing anything anyway, so. Online main screen, I think we can get rid of that. Pause screen, no. Settings audio, yes. Settings main screen. Um, is there even a background here? There it is. Settings video. Did we do credits? Yeah, we did not. All right, so we take that out. All right, so boot this up and see what we look like.
All right, so the screen shield for the online screen needs to be much more, much more dark. This is the online main screen. So we have screen shield is true. But the screen shield is just not not enough. Not bad. Uh, yeah, that's why we got version control. So you just you could just get rid of those original files and because you can always go back into uh, source history. Like basically, if you want to see what you've changed, the easiest way is to go to. Like if I want to know what I changed in the online main screen CSS or something. Well, I got to find it in here. But yeah, so just a diff against have revision. And you can see exactly what you've changed and what things used to be. And you can also go to file history. And you can diff all these guys against previous revisions or against revisions that you have right now. And it'll. I, I don't. So I know where you're coming from, and I know exactly why you're doing it. And it's a decent way to. It's a decent way to work, but you end up with two million copies of the same shit all everywhere. So credits, you'll need scrolling text. Um, just for, to have the text scroll, definitely doesn't need to be its own level for that. We don't want to change levels if we can help it. Just because changing levels requires a whole blocking load and all sorts of other shit. So there's there should be no reason to have the credits be their own level unless you got something real special in mind. All right, so I need these cameras to update properly. Let's also go into a game and make sure nothing's screwed.
Let's also turn off all these transitions. So what is key zero? It's the axis value. Okay. Six eighty seven. There we go. And the credit stuff, like, we'll see. I, I know what you want to do with, I know not what you want to do, but because you had the whole Kickstarter stuff and you had Patreon and everything, and you definitely want to have some place to celebrate them. So I understand why you want to have a more complex credits thing ro rolling around. Key 124 was down. Yeah, these, these buttons are... Alright, I guess we'll just ignore them. But we'll see, you know, like when we're talking about making making a decision between what we get done otherwise can be She'll figure it out. Are the credits even showing up anymore? Like, are they just completely screwed? Or are the credits literally that entire background? Yeah, I guess it is that whole background. You got a, P a PSD file in here? Oh, yeah, that's 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 getting removed.
So I'm just, just going to do a real shitty job of screwing around with this. So I'm sure if I do like a really bad job here, it'll actually help because then Adam will be all pissed off and he'll have to fix it because he'll look at it and be like, oh my god, this is a fucking eyesore. <laughs> 